welcome to this lecture on determinants where we will focus on solving problems. Uh, in this series of lectures we have looked at many concepts related to determinants starting from defining determinants, seeing where they come up, uh, investigating how determinants help in uh, finding inverses of matrices, uh, solving system of equations and so on. Of course, through those conceptual uh, lectures we have also looked at some problems in terms of examples, but what we wanted to do for this lecture was to focus on problems. Uh, my take on this is that uh, of course, the conceptual, conceptual grounding is important in solving the problems, so that is a given. At the same time, sometimes solving the problems also adds to our understanding of the concepts and in a sense it is this cyclic uh, nature of both understanding the concepts and solving problems and then understanding the concepts again which really makes us familiar with the material. So, if I just draw this in a small graphic, you can say that these concepts are important in solving problems, but Complementarily, what we will see in general is that when we solve problems, solving problems also helps to understand and develop our concepts. So, it is this overall feedback between understanding concepts and solving problems which really helps our overall grasp of the material. So, in this lecture, we will start with uh, looking at particular examples, uh, solving the problems one by one and try to see how both solving the problems and understanding the concepts go hand in hand and how just the idea of looking at solving problems, what can we do at each step, uh, what are our possibilities, uh, just discussing the problems in general. All right, so let us start. So, the first problem example one is a situation where you have to show that a particular determinant equals 0. So, we want to show that when we have a determinant 1, 1, 1, B, C, C, A, A, B and A times B plus C, B times C plus A in a cyclic fashion c times a plus b. So, what we want to show that this is equal to 0. Okay. So, how do we do this? Well, of course, what direct way is to evaluate the determinant and then show that okay, it indeed goes to 0. Uh, another approach is to try to look at some properties and see whether we could use that to simplify the situation. So, it is in fact the latter which is what we are going to do and over there what we see is that okay, if you look at the first column, it is all ones. Um, the second column has expressions um, B C C A A B. Okay, and third one is expressions like A B plus A C B C plus B A C A plus C B. Okay, so when we consider this, then we can say okay, what we see is that if you sum the second and the third columns for all rows we get the same expression. Let us write it down, maybe that provides a way to simplify this. So, let us write down that left hand side. What we were just noting is that all of these are 1, then this is B C, C A, A B and this let me just expand it and say okay, this is A B plus A C or C A just to maintain the cyclic order, uh, B C plus A B and uh, C A plus B C. All right. So, now we see that if we consider the sum of this column and this column, then we get A B plus C A plus B C. When we do that here also we get A B plus B C plus C A and similarly here A B plus B C plus C A. So, let us do that uh, and our overall understanding is that C 3, we are going to say C 3 plus C 2. And we know from the properties of the determinants that this does not change the value of the determinants. So, 1, 1, 1, B, C, C, A, A, B, then here we have A, B plus 
B C plus C A, A B plus B C plus C A and also A B plus B C plus C A. So, all rows in this column are identical. In fact, we can factor out this entire expression and we left with just 1 1 1. So, the relevant property of the determinant shows that this can be written as A B plus B C plus C A and determinant is 1 1 1 B C C A A B and again 1 1 1 correct. So, we have uh, noticeably made the determinant more narrower by simplifying the terms uh, and then now what? Well, now it is relatively straightforward. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that now we have two columns C 1 and C 3 which are identical and so by the uh, property of the determinant, we note that the determinant value is 0 which is exactly what we wanted to show. So, this is equal to A B plus B C plus C A times 0 and why is it 0? Because C 1 and C 3 are identical and this is what we had to show. This is what we wanted to show. Right. So, what may be observed over here is that um, of course, we can expand the determinant, but just as we had mentioned previously, the goal of studying these properties was to say okay, now uh, can we simplify the evaluation of the determinants, make it more systematic, uh, make it more efficient and so by the following rearrangement that we illustrate in this example, we can see that we can prove certain identities of the determinants such as the one that we looked at now. Um, so, this you know directly says okay, this provides a relevance or provides a usefulness for studying the properties that we saw. Um, what else can we say about this example? So, this provides one illustration, we can look at some other illustrations. Um, right. So, let us look at some other examples of how we can try to uh, look at the properties of the determinants and try to uh, simplify the evaluations. For next example, let us look at the following identity. Example 2, where we have to show that the following determinant 1 1 1 A B C B C C A A B is equal to A minus B B minus C C minus A. We have to show that this determinant is a product of these three terms. So, how do we go about it? Of course, we could evaluate the determinant. Uh, the goal over here is to see whether using some of the properties uh, is going to make it more efficient to show the identity. So, the left hand side here is 1 1 1 A B C B C C A A B. Uh, note that this column has three ones. So, we could consider subtracting uh, these second row with the first row and replace this one with a 0 because we know that uh, doing these row operations such as R 2 goes to R 2 minus R 1 is not going to change the value of the de determinant. So, what happens when we do that? we get 1 A B C. So, the first row is unchanged, the second row becomes 0 B minus A C A minus B C. So, the advantage of using this property here that doing these kind of operations on the row does not change the value of the determinant is that we have replaced this entry here from 1 to 0. Similarly, we could do the same for 
the third row r 3 goes to r 3 minus r 1. So, we have 1 minus 1 0 c minus a c minus a and a b minus b c a b minus b c. So, there we have done that we have using these two operations which we know through the property are not going to change the value of the determinant we have made this column from 1 1 1 to 1 0 0. And the advantage is that if you were to expand this determinant we can expand along this column and then we just take the determinant of this smaller 2 by 2 determinant. Of course, we note that this b minus a is there and then here c a minus b c and again we can take a b minus a common because c is there in both terms. So, even before expanding we can potentially use one more property. What is that property? Let me rewrite this determinant and we can take a look at it. So, this determinant was 1 0 0 a b minus a c minus a b c c a minus b c a b minus b c. Note that this quantity can be written as minus c times b minus a and this b minus a is the same as over here. Similarly, this quantity can be written as b times or rather minus b times c minus a and note that this quantity is the same as here. Now, from the property that we can pull out this entry from this row without changing the value of the determinant, we write this equal to b minus a times 1 a b c 0 1 minus c and we can do the same for this row by pulling out this quantity c minus a from both. So, we have this times c minus a times a determinant where the last row is 0 1 and minus b. So, we are now left with a much simpler 2 by 2 determinant to evaluate when we expand along this row because we have made use of the two properties. One where we got these two zeros in the first place by performing some row operations. Second by pulling out these constant terms from the rows which we know is not going to change the value of the determinant. So, if we are finally left with v minus a c minus a and this 2 by 2 determinant which can be evaluated either by directly doing minus b minus minus c or by other methods such as the direct definition. Here we have v minus a c minus a and minus b minus minus c that is plus c b minus a c minus a and uh, minus and minus. So, it becomes minus b plus c. So, just to make it symmetric uh, we can write this down as a minus b. So, we take a minus sign out from here and that minus sign can go over here into this term. So, this is b minus c times c minus a which is exactly what we have to show in terms of the right hand side. So, now through a sequence of operations primarily based on these two properties where we have taken the uh, replaced the entries here with 0 and second by taking out these constant terms we have been able to show that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So, that completes this example. So, now let us look at another example and this example over here is uh, interesting because again it relates a geometrical quantity like an area with the evaluation of a particular determinant. So, this has to do in fact with the area of a triangle uh, written in terms of its expression in the coordinate geometry. So, the vertices are given 
as x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and we know the formula of the area I will write that down shortly, but we want to show that that is nothing but the same as evaluating a particular determinant. So, let us me write that down and then we can see how we evaluate that determinant. So, the example here is the following um, and a triangle with vertices at x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2 and x 3 y 3 is has area equal to half x 1 y 2 minus y 3 plus x 2 y 3 minus y 1 plus x 3 y 1 minus y 2. Show that this expression can be obtained by evaluating the determinant half x 1, x 2, x 3, y 1, y 2, y 3, 1, 1, 1. So, in other words, what we have to show is that the expression which is written in terms of the coordinates of the vertices of a triangle can be expressed in terms of this determinant, where the first row has the first vertex followed by 1 and so on for the other rows. And of course, we are talking about an area, so we should be careful just to take just the positive value of the determinant, although uh, as we had discussed previously, that we can also give some geometric interpretation to the sign. For our purposes, however, we just stick to the absolute value of the determinant. So, it is with that expression in mind that we want to show that these two take the same value. So, as before we will start from the determinant and try to show whether it is equal to the expression on the right hand side or not. So, in other words we will show therefore, we have to show that half times x 1, x 2, x 3, y 1, y 2, y 3, 1, 1, 1 is equal to the expression of the area written up over there, which is half x 1 y 2 minus y 3 plus x 2 y 3 minus y 1 plus x 3 y 1 minus y 2. So, let us see. So, let us start from that left hand side. So, this is the determinant multiplied by a half x 1 x 2 x 3 y 1 y 2 y 3 1 1 1 All right. So, this is another determinant which is there whose one column is all ones. Um, how can we handle this? As before what we can do is that we can um, subtract the last uh, row and also the second row with the first row. So, that the um, columns, the last columns, the ones in the last columns, there are only one of them which is 1 and the remaining are 0. What do I mean? What I mean, let me write down here is that I want to say that R 2 becomes R 2 minus R 1 and same with R 3, R 3 becomes R 3 minus R 1 and we know that with these operations the property is that the determinant value does not change. So, we can write down this as x 1 y 1 1 r 2 minus r 1. So, x 2 minus x 1 
y2 minus y1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. Same with the last row, so say x3 minus x1, y3 minus y1 and 0. And then this is the natural uh, column to expand the determinant around because it is just a product of these two terms, uh, because that is a determinant of, because that is the cofactor of this entry remaining are 0. So, it is half x 2 minus x 1, x 3 minus x 1, um, y 2 minus y 1, y 3 minus y 1, all right. Um, and this product times minus this. So, this is half x 2 minus x 1, y 3 minus y 1 minus x 3 minus x 1, y 2 minus y 1. And what we have to show is that it is in terms of sums which have common x's. So, let us expand the x values. So, we have x 2 y 3 minus y 1 minus x 1 y 3 minus y 1 minus x 3 y 2 minus y 1 plus x 1 y 2 minus y 1. So, the coefficient of x 1 is going to be y 2 minus y 1 minus y 3 plus y 1. So, these y 1s will cancel. So, this is half x 1 y 2 minus y 3 plus x 2 y 3 minus y 1 and then just changing the sign over there plus x 3 y 1 minus y 2 and this is what we wanted to show. So, again this is an example where we can um, do the direct evaluation of the determinants, but what we are doing over here is that we are just using some properties to simplify the evaluation primarily by reducing some elements of the matrix whose determinant we are evaluating to 0, so that it is an easier uh, determinant evaluation. Okay. So, these were some examples we looked at. Now, let us look at a more relatively harder example um, and we look at it from two ways. One is okay, how do we solve the problem in the context that it is given and also to look at it in a more general or at least sketch how we can look at it in a more general way using the determinant properties that we are looking at. So, this is the problem which has uh, been appeared in the JEE uh, mains problem. So, let me write it down and I will see how to address it. So, the example over here is as follows. So, this is based on um, JEE mains problem. So, the problem is that if these alphas and betas are not 0, and we define a function f of n which is alpha power n plus beta power n and the following determinant 3 1 plus f 1 1 plus f 2 1 plus f 1 1 plus f 2 1 plus f 3. So, these denote f 3 means when you put n equal to 3 and this is alpha q plus beta q. So, those are what are populating the entries of this matrix 1 plus f 2, 1 plus f 3 and 1 plus f 4. Uh, if this is equal to k times 1 minus alpha square, 1 minus beta square and alpha minus beta square, then so, if that is the case, then what is the value of k? And the choices are that it is 1, the second choice is that it is minus 1, the third choice is that it is alpha times beta and the fourth choice is that it is 1 by alpha beta. So, this problem is from uh, this, this question number 65 uh, from the 2014 paper 1, uh, 
book E, which is accessible, which was accessed from the website J E E main dot N I C dot I N web info question papers 2014.htm uh, and in particular it is the pdf file 0604214e dot pdf. So, this is the uh, the source of this paper. So, it is a JE means uh, problem. Right. So, this is a general problem which is given. Now, there are of course, uh, given the problem there are multiple ways to address it. Uh, Let us look at some ways in which uh, may be uh, useful in trying to find out the value of k. Uh, in the first of these, uh, what we can do is we can say, okay, ultimately we want to find out the value of k. So, maybe what we can do is just to assign some values of alpha and beta and see whether that comes up or not. So, that is one way, although it may not be the most complete way, it may give a solution. On the other hand, what we could do is to say, okay, now let us try to solve this in a more general fashion and come up with an expression and then find out the value of k. So, we can efficiently hope, we hope that to efficiently be able to come up with the uh, value of the determinant. Uh, of course, one can also expand it directly, but how can we express it in terms of alpha, beta and alpha minus beta as it is on the right hand side. Uh, so, therefore, uh, what are the ways in which we can look at it? Let us see how we can solve it. The first one approach is to just use some values of alpha and beta, uh, which are convenient and which will help in finding a quick value of k. And then we will try to at least sketch the way we could do it in a more general systematic way using the properties of the determinants. All right. So, let us see how we can do that. So, in the first way, in one way, we can set values of alpha and beta. So, in particular, we can say alpha is minus 1 and beta equal to 2. Values chosen such that they are close to 1 uh, make it a more efficient evaluation. So, what is the determinant? It is 3, let me rewrite that 1 plus f 1. 1 plus f 2 and it is uh, as you notice a symmetric matrix. So, we do not have to evaluate all of them just half of them plus the diagonal should be okay. 1 plus f 3, 1 plus f 4. So, let us write it down in general for alphas and betas and then we will replace those values. So, this is 3 1 plus alpha square plus beta square. Excuse me, I think this should be 1. So, then this is just 1 plus alpha plus beta. Then this is 1 plus alpha square plus beta square. Uh, okay, and this is 1 plus alpha plus beta. 1 plus alpha square plus beta square. Uh, 1 plus alpha cube plus beta cube. 1 plus alpha square plus beta square, 1 plus alpha cube plus beta cube and finally, 1 plus alpha 4 plus beta 4. Now, you know there are all these exponents and then just imagining how to uh, expand this determinant in general, see whether it simplifies may not be the most straightforward thing to do. Anyway, let us put alpha equal to minus 1 and beta equal to 2, then what do we get? We can get this is 3. 1 plus alpha, so alpha plus 1 is 0, so that is just beta 2 and then here alpha square is 1, 1 plus 1 2 plus beta square 4, so that is 6. So, this 2 goes here, it is a symmetric matrix, this one is also 6 and this also 6, we already evaluated these. Mm, 1 plus alpha cube is also uh, 0 because alpha cube is minus 1, beta cube however is 8, so there is an 8 here. And then again alpha power 4, so this is 1, 1, 2, 2 plus 2 power 4 is 16, so that is 18. 
all right. So, that is the determinant that we get if we set these values. Um, then uh, we can now expand this. So, we could use some properties to try to simplify it uh, or we could do it directly. So, either way uh, we could solve it. So, in this particular case let us just expand it uh, about this row. So, this is 3 into 6 times 18 minus 64 because that is 8 times 8 uh, minus 2. 2 times 18 is 36 minus 48 plus 6 times um, 16 minus 36. So, 6 times 18 is um, 8 4, so 108 minus 64, 36 minus 48 is minus 12, so this is plus 24 and 16 minus 36 is 20, so minus 120. Uh, so, this is 3 times 44 plus 24 minus 120. So, this 3 times 44 is actually 132 plus 24 minus 120. So, there is a 12 there 24. So, this evaluates to 36. Now, let us look at the right hand side expression uh, which was k times 1 minus alpha square 1 minus beta square alpha minus beta square and what is its value when alpha is minus 1 beta is 2. Uh, this becomes k into 2 square minus 1 square and alpha minus beta so minus 3 square. So, 2 square is 4 times 1 times 36, uh, excuse me 4 times 9 which is 36. So, this is k into 4 into 1 into 9, so 36 k. So, the left hand side is 36 k, 36 and the right hand side is 36 k. So, this together would imply that k equal to 1 which is the first option. So, by using particular values of alpha and beta, we get that k is equal to 1. Of course, this is not a general way to show what the value of k is. Uh, for that, we will have to uh, solve the determinant in general, but as a quick way to say okay, uh, given the fact that we only want to find k and in general it seems it should hold for all alpha and beta, one can have a leap of faith and just try to check the value of k. Of course, more systematically how do we do that? Let us see now. So, what we have to essentially do is to say okay, we want to find k from the equality mm, 3 1 plus alpha plus beta 1 plus alpha square plus beta square. 1 plus alpha plus beta, 1 plus alpha square plus beta square, 1 plus alpha cube plus beta cube, um, 1 plus alpha square plus beta square, 1 plus alpha cube plus beta cube, 1 plus alpha power 4 plus beta power 4. And this we say is equal to k 1 minus alpha square 1 minus beta square and alpha minus beta square. So, how do we do this? So, how do we find k from here? So, effectively we have to evaluate this entire determinant. Now, there was this one property that you could write down uh, if you can represent the rows of a determinant by a sum of two terms, you can write down the whole determinant as a sum of those two determinants. Uh, I think that is a property which um, uh, has the potential to simplify the problem. We have to of course, look at it and uh, maybe we will just sketch how to do it uh, to check the general way to solve it. Uh, and also one thing that can be noticed here is that this 3 which is the first row first column entry can be written as 1 plus 1 plus 1 and this these two ones can be taken as alpha power 0 and beta power 0. 
So, in fact, it is like 1 plus f of 0. Uh, and so, we have like each element decomposed as three terms. So, how do we uh, expand the determinant? How is it possible to uh, use this property? Uh, let us try that. Let us look at that. So, let us see what the left hand side is. So, we have the thought in mind that we want to just expand the determinant. 1 plus alpha square plus beta square. Uh, we will do it row wise. Uh, it may seem that there are a lot of options, but on further considering those options, we will realize that many of them evaluate to 0. So, of course, it may not be the most optimal way to solve it, but definitely uh, seems like a better way to do it than just directly eval evaluating the determinant. No, how do we get this alpha power 4? I mean, I am sure they will also cancel out because there is no alpha power. Um, you know, higher values expression of alphas and betas, but how do we do it? It is uh, relatively uh, cloudy. So, let us just expand this. Now, we can replace this as a sum of three determinants obtained by splitting the first row entries. Uh, so, we can get that this is 1, uh, 1, 1 and then the same rows as here. So, these are same rows uh, plus the second one, 1 alpha uh, alpha square and then the same rows plus 1 beta beta square and then same rows. Right. Uh, so, then we have replaced one determinant with a sum of three determinants. Now, um, the idea is to now apply these properties to the second row of each of these three determinants. So, then you will have like each determinant has three more possibilities. Uh, so, it sounds quite a lot because then for each of them we will have to do three more additions. But if we just take one step further, what you will see is that many of these determinants uh, evaluate to 0 and that is because their rows are identical. So, let us see what comes. So, if you look at uh, just the first of these 1 1 1 uh, and then the second row the second row over here which has to come is 1 plus alpha plus beta 1 plus alpha square plus beta square uh, 1 plus alpha cube plus beta cube okay and if we see that if we think about expanding these in three determinants Right. So, the third row stays what was before. So, if we do this 1 1 1 and then we say okay, the first one is going to be 1 1 1 and whatever was here plus 1 1 1 with alpha alpha square alpha cube and whatever was here and the last one being 1 1 1 beta beta square beta cube and whatever was here right as you see we do not need to really look at different options of this because this already is 0 why because these two rows are identical so we do not have to look at over here now of course for these two we have to still look go one step further because their third row was 1 plus alpha square plus beta square 1 plus alpha cube plus beta cube 1 plus alpha power 4 plus beta power 4 okay um, but again out of the three possibilities that we will see here again many of them will become zero why because if you just look at 1 1 1 alpha alpha square alpha cube and just look at the first term 1 1 1 then it is the same as the identical as the first row. So, this element the determinant here which has 1 1 1 alpha alpha square alpha cube 1 1 1 is going to be 0. Then we look at the second one and that also is going to go to 0. Why? Because we have 1 1 1 alpha alpha square alpha cube then alpha square alpha cube alpha power 4. Effectively these two rows are the same because you can pull out an alpha here will be 1 alpha alpha square 
we can pull out alpha square here and that will also be 1 alpha alpha square. So, this would be 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square and taking out an alpha here and there will be 1 alpha alpha square taking out an alpha square square. So, these two are the same. So, this is also 0. So, all we will be left with is 1 1 1 alpha alpha square alpha cube beta square beta cube beta power 4. So, so far we are left with just one determinant which is not 0. Similarly, when we do over here we will just be left with one determinant because the terms corresponding to expanding this 1 1 1 will be cancelled out with because this row will be identical. Same if we just look at uh, the last of these beta that will also cancel out. So, all we will be left with from here would be just one determinant 1 1 1 beta beta square beta cube uh, and then we are going to have alpha square alpha cube alpha power 4. So, out of the multiple more possibilities that we may have all we are left with in obtaining this branch of the determinants is going to be just this determinant and this determinant. Similarly, going back to what we have seen over here. So, here we have got only two determinants, then we will see here we get only two more determinants and here also two more determinants. So, overall we will get only six determinants and let me write those down. So, those determinants are going to be the following. So, after simplifying and noting that many determinants are 0, we are left with the following 6. And these are 1 1 1 alpha alpha square alpha cube beta square beta cube beta power 4 plus 1 1 1 beta beta square beta cube alpha square alpha cube alpha power 4 plus 1 alpha alpha square which is coming from the second set of determinants. So, 1 1 1 beta square beta cube beta power 4 plus 1 alpha alpha square beta beta square beta cube 1 1 1 plus and this is coming from the third of the decomposition that we had done 1 1 1 alpha square alpha cube alpha power 4 plus 1 beta beta square alpha alpha square alpha cube 1 1 1. So, these are the 6 determinants that we get to evaluate. For the sake of clarity, let us look at each of these uh, 6 determinants and see how they reduce to the common factor. So, let us write down the first determinant. This is 1 1 1 alpha alpha square alpha cube beta square beta cube beta power 4. So, if you notice here that this in the second row the term alpha can be taken out right this is exploiting the property of the determinant uh, and in the last row the term beta square can be taken out from each of the terms. So, then what we are left with is 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square 1 beta beta square. So, this is the factor and this is the determinant. So, this is for the first determinant. Let us look at the second determinant. 
this was 1 1 1 beta beta square beta cube alpha square alpha cube alpha power 4. So, here again the term beta can be removed from the second row and the term alpha square from the first row excuse me the third row. So, this is alpha square beta 1 1 1 1 beta beta square 1 alpha alpha square. Notice the only difference between this determinant and this determinant is the order of the last two rows and so in fact, we can interchange these rows, but as we know from the property we will give a minus sign at the outside. So, minus alpha square beta 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square 1 beta beta square. So, this is the factor and this is the determinant. Similarly, we can look at all the other determinants one by one which we should do and remove the common factor. So, the third one is 1 alpha alpha square 1 1 1 beta square beta cube beta power 4 and here we can take out beta square from the last row. So, that is beta square and then 1 alpha alpha square 1 1 1 1 beta beta square. Now, in this determinant if we interchange these two rows which will induce a minus sign at the outside of the determinant, we will get what we are looking for in short a product of a factor this one and then the determinant. Proceeding similarly for the fourth determinant which is 1 alpha alpha square beta beta square beta cube 1 1 1. We can remove a factor beta from here. So, this is beta 1 alpha alpha square 1 beta beta square 1 1 1. And now, here to get this common factor we have to ultimately move the last row at the very top. So, in a sense it is 2 row interchanges one is from the third to the second and then it moves from the second to the first. Each of these will give a minus sign and a product of those minus sign is a plus sign. So, we will get beta 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square 1 beta beta square again there is a factor here and a determinant. So, this was the fourth matrix. Now, we look at the fifth one which is 1 beta beta square 1 1 1 alpha square alpha cube alpha power 4. So, this is removing alpha square from the last row is going to give 1 beta beta square 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square. And what we need to be doing here as before is that we want to move the first row to the last using these two sequential row interchanges each of which gives a minus sign. So, overall it is a plus alpha square 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square 1 beta beta square. And finally, the sixth determinant is 1 beta beta square alpha alpha square alpha cube. 1 1 1 which is equal to alpha 
times 1 beta beta square 1 alpha alpha square 1 1 1 and here we have to interchange these two rows which will give a minus sign which is minus alpha 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square the second row remains where it is 1 beta beta square. So, in this way we have reduced the fifth and sixth determinant into a factor times the determinant. The factors are different, but the determinant is the same and so we can just to complete the step combine all the factors. So, what we get is alpha beta square minus alpha square beta minus beta square plus beta plus alpha square minus alpha into the common determinant 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square 1 beta beta square. Okay. And uh, just to complete what we can find out by using either direct expansion or by using some of these uh, properties is that this determinant evaluates to nothing but this entire factor. So, that this is equal to alpha beta square minus alpha square beta minus beta square let me just write down alpha square here first plus beta minus alpha and there is going to be a power of 2 because this determinant also gives the same factor this can be checked and then we can further simplify this one by noting that the term beta minus alpha can be taken as common from many of these terms. So, these term, these terms and this term beta minus alpha plus beta minus alpha square. So, there is a beta minus alpha square and alpha beta minus beta minus alpha plus 1 and this also can be factorized into 1 minus alpha square and 1 minus beta square. So, overall this can be written down as 1 minus alpha square 1 minus beta square and alpha minus beta square because squaring does not change the sign and this should help to understand how these steps come about. So, here we have expanded the steps uh, to get overall clarity about these things. Uh, what we emphasize here is that these row operations have helped us to uh, simplify the execution of the determinant, but the underlying idea is the same which is that we are using these properties of the determinants to try to simplify the evaluation which allows us to solve uh, problems which at first glance seem uh, relatively tricky. So, in this particular case the problem that we had to solve was this one and on the face of it looking at this it may not be clear uh, which properties to use, where to use, what is the value. So, we illustrated two ways in which we could address this. Uh, sure, there are other ways also, both of them give the value of k to be equal to 1. And so, the goal of looking at a relatively complicated problem like this was to illustrate how the simple building blocks of the problems that we have tried to do before give us some insight into how to handle these problems. So, uh, to summarize uh, this topic of how we uh, can use the properties that we have studied of the determinants, the other aspects that we have seen about the determinants, I think it is important to solve problems. Uh, through the series of lectures we have had, we have tried to do a uh, combination of presenting the concepts and also to solve the problems. Uh, in particular, in this lecture we focus primarily on solving the problems with the goal that they will solidify our concepts uh, and of course, we need to know the concepts to solve the problems, but it is a uh, feedback loop where 
we can uh, apply the concepts, solve the problems and at the same time solving the problems gives some insight into uh, it expands, it adds another layer, adds some appreciation of the concepts that we are trying to understand. So, in particular it is about determinants that we have focused this problem solving session on and so together uh, with these concepts and problems uh, and indeed through the overall series of lectures that we had had uh, starting from the definitions, starting from the motivating examples uh, to the properties of determinants, its applications in solving systems of equations, in taking matrix inverses. Uh, we hope to convey the importance of determinants as well as equip us with tools to apply our understanding of determinants to uh, many situations. So, with that I thank you for your attention for both this lecture as well as for uh, the series of lectures that we have uh, done. Thank you.